I'll go back to Tig with Tuesdays. You may notice a slight change of scenery. My dog Leo has taken over the couch, so for today I'm going to be filming from my desk instead. With everything that's going on right now, a lot of us are having more conversations with people we know and love about race, the police, protests, even the use of the military. And while these conversations are really important to have, they can also be really tough. So for this and next Tuesday, I'm going to be sharing tidbits from our training on tough questions, how to navigate tricky conversations. Today we're going to be talking about the ARR model, or a three-step process for responding to tough questions. Uh, but before I launch into the model, we're going to use a hypothetical example, because I think giving examples is sometimes the easiest way to teach something. So hypothetically, let's say you posted Black Lives Matter on Facebook, and someone you know responded, but don't all lives matter? This question comes with a lot of baggage and can easily lead to an emotional implosion rather than an opportunity for learning. So today's steps are three different ways that you can de-escalate and reinvest in a more constructive conversation. Step one, acknowledge their fears and concerns. Demonstrate that you understand the concerns of the person you're talking to. Maybe this is a point of view that you've had before, in which case you could share a short personal anecdote that shows that you really know where they're coming from. Or maybe it's not, but you can still probably intuit their underlying motivation. So in the case of our example question, you could acknowledge, it seems like you're concerned that elevating one group of people means we're diminishing another group of people. And that can feel scary if you're afraid that you'll get left out, something like that. This acknowledge portion is the most important step. And so this is where you should spend the bulk of your response time. Step two, respond to the question. This isn't always gonna be easy, but take the question seriously. Show that you've really thought about it. Hopefully you've laid the groundwork by now so that you can share your analysis of the issue and truly be heard. A combination of personal stories and facts and figures should be the most compelling. So, in our example. At first, I didn't know what the phrase Black Lives Matter meant either. But then I did some reading and I came across an analogy to a story in the Bible, the parable of the lost sheep. In the story, the shepherd left the 99 sheep in order to go after the one that was lost. Sometimes a situation calls for a person or a group of people to get extra consideration because the cards are stacked so heavily against them. This doesn't have to be the most perfect or complete response, uh, but at least it shows a level of depth beyond the partisan label or the headlines where most of us get caught up on most times. Step three, redirect to action. Move the conversation forward, whatever that might look like. You can invite them to ask more questions or investigate something further or even take action on an issue with you. So in our example, you might say, are there other questions about Black Lives Matter that I can help you research and explore? I know this was a quick tidbit on a topic that could use a lot more discussion. So I definitely recommend our full length training on tough questions. Uh, but meanwhile, as I wrap up, I want to thank the rising organizers who originally taught me this nifty model. Uh, and tune in next week. We're going to talk about some general tips and tricks around making these conversations as successful as possible. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>